Hey kids, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. We're back. We got more of a limited schedule this year, but I'm so happy to be with you. Uh, we're going to talk today about some of the things that you might see in church this Sunday. Um, but not really, because today we're going to talk about one of the things that you probably won't see in church. Um, this is a text that I have skipped over year after year after year because I've been afraid to preach it. So um, why not do it here? Uh, the epistle reading for our, our Sunday this year that you probably will hear in church is Galatians chapter 5. It, it reads this, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I have warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. It's hard to be a Lutheran and cling to this because it sounds like all the people who do all the sinning are going straight to hell, including all of the idolaters. But here's the thing, even before we get to the list of the things that are uncomfortable, like sexual immorality, you're out at the first commandment. We break the first commandment. There are things that we fear, love, and trust in more than God, let alone that big, long list of things that you do secretly that you don't want your pastor to know. And so you sort of lump it all into the I poor, miserable sinner and just hope the absolution covers it. Even if you don't name it, it does. Your sins are forgiven you. But here's the thing. Um... Paul, as he writes this letter to the Galatians who are doing these things, he addresses them as if they have two thoughts, as if they have two wills, as if they have both the fruit of the spirit and the burdens of the sins of the flesh, and these things are against each other. You see, it's not just sort of one or the other, but Paul writes, look at you, ha look at you who have these two things. Uh, you have both of these things so that you do not do the things that you want to do. This is not an either or. It's a both and. Uh, if, if you want this to sort of be all on you, then you have to deal with the desires of the flesh. But now you have two desires, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit. And that means that the sins that condemn you to hell are found in Christians. And the things that are of love, of the spirit, they are from the spirit. Against these, there is no... There is no law. It'd be great if we all just focus in on those. And it's easy to sort of preach the sermon where you talk about loving each other a little bit more, but it's harder to preach the sermon against sexual immorality, against drunkenness, against division, against envy and jealousy. To the people who are jealous, there is no salvation for you. Jesus loves you is not a sermon that I've ever really had the courage to preach. But to actually find both of these willes inside of us it's a gift and not a curse. That Paul talks about both of these things going on inside of us, it, it's to actually alleviate your conscience, not burden it more. Because at the end, the only thing to do is close the verse the way that Paul does. According, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Your sins go on the cross. They would condemn you. They do condemn you. And so Christ robs that condemnation. He bears it to the cross. He bleeds. He dies for you. The thing that you will hear in church, whether or not your pastor is going to preach on this, is that Jesus forgives you your sins. But what it actually looks like in practice is a war that you lose and a war that is terrifying to lose because then you have to deal with the jealousy that's not supposed to be there but is. And it's to stop you from doing the things that you want to do. The sinful flesh is set against the will of the Spirit. And Christianity is not sort of overcoming the flesh by your own well, flesh, so that you can do more things that are of the spirit, but not of the flesh. You see how weird that sort of gets? Instead, we have a Holy Spirit who conquers the flesh, not by giving you the motivation, willpower, and resolve to just be better, but by sending the Son to die on the cross. All of the things that condemn you are crucified daily in your baptism. Daily, old Adam drowns. And that doesn't just mean wake up and try harder. It means daily, old Adam drowns. All the things that condemn are left under the water in your baptism. All the things that are, are of salvation are worked in you as new man arises to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. And this is of the Spirit. Both of these things will exist in you. And 
you're allowed to say that sin is bad, sin breaks stuff, but you're not allowed to change your identity in it. Um, and you're not allowed to look at your neighbor as if theirs does either. It, it's, it's wonderful that you can talk to, talk to each other, talk about each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Because then you get to talk about your brothers and sisters in Christ who are full of, uh, I don't know, idolatry and sexual immorality and impurity and sensuality and idolatry and sorcery and enmity and strife and jealousy and fits of angers and rivalries and dissensions and divisions and envy, drunkenness and orgies, and strife all and the like, the things like these. Because even though your neighbors are full of those sins, even though your brothers and sisters are full of those sins, they don't stop being your brothers and sisters in Christ. They're your brothers and sisters who just simply need help all the more, forgiveness all the more. Sin is never good. Sin always breaks stuff. Look at the damage done by some of these things on that list. But then thanks be to God that your identity doesn't change to assume and become these things. You are not known by your sins. You're known by your baptism. You are known by the fact simply that you have the will of the Spirit working in you. You're allowed to sort of wrestle with the toughest of texts here because you have the realities that we don't sort of soft pedal it and sort of make the two meet in the middle. Like Christianity is sort of trying to do less bad and do more good. Rather, Christianity is the death of everything that is evil on the cross where Jesus died for you and it is the resurrection of everything good as God works good. And you're actually going to be able to see that in you. You're actually going to be able to lean into that. Those things that are inside of you that, that it bring condemnation, your jealousy, your envy, your anger, your idolatry, all of those things, or even your sexual immorality, Jesus dies for those. They have to stay dead because if they stay in you, they condemn. Let them go to the cross because Jesus robs them from you. He rips them from your hands and he brings them to nothing so that you can have eternal life. He gives to you not simply the measurement of, of new good works to measure and count to say that I've done enough, but an identity. You're a child of God. There will be good works in you. You're going to have two wills now. And the mark of your faith is actually that you have two wills now. Thanks be to God that the thing that saves is that the, the flesh has already been crucified. It's even already been raised. Day by day, we see it play out in our baptism until at last we enter the kingdom. We rise in our own bodies to finally put off those things that condemn. But until then, the thing that you go to church to hear is that your sins are forgiven you. Keep doing it.